Good morning, Metro. Good morning. Nice to see everybody this morning. We'll start with a couple songs, and after which we'll have scripture reading and prayer. Amen. God has smiled on me. God has. He smiled on me, and he has set me free. You know my God has. He smiled on me, and he's been good to me. I said, my God has, he smiled on me, and he has set me free. You know my God has, he smiled on me, and he's been good to me. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? I say, no, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. You know my God has, he smiled on me and he has set me free you know my god has he smiled on me and he's been good to me i said amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You know my God has. He smiled on me, and he has set me free. You know my God has. He smiled on me. And he's been good to me. Amen. We have one more, and after which we have scripture reading and prayer. We're going to do shelter in the time of storm. It's fitting for today, seeing how what's going on in our city, in this world. Shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide, a shelter in a time of storm. Secure whatever he'll be tied, a shelter in a time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in a weary land. You know a weary land in this weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. My, 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 my. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in a weary land, oh, a weary land, in a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. In a shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in a time of storm. And no fears alarm, no foes or fright, a shelter in a time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in a weary land. You know a weary land, in a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Oh, Lord, a weary land, in a a weary land, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. In a rock divine, no refuge dear, a shelter in a time of storm. 
and be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in a time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in a weary land, oh, a weary land, in a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. My, 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 Jesus is a rock in a weary land, you know, a weary land, in a weary Weary land, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, and he's my shelter in a time of storm. Let us be standing for scripture reading and prayer. Let us be standing for the reading of the Holy and Divine Scriptures. This morning's reading will be coming from Philippians chapter 4, and the verses are 4 through 7. The fourth chapter of the book of Philippians verses 4 through 7 and they read rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice let your moderation be known unto all men the lord is at hand be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god verse 7 and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We ask God to bless the hearing, the reading, and the understanding of the holy and divine word of God. Let us prepare to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Heavenly Father and most righteous God, hallowed be thy name. Father God, you are our creator, Father God, you are our sustainer. Father God, it's through you we live, we move, we have our very sense of being. Yes. We are so grateful to be your children, Father God, and to have your assurance yes. that your eyes are over the righteous and your ears are attentive to our petitions. Father God, we give thanks, Father God, for your mercies that are renewed daily in our lives. Father God, we know that we fall short of your glory, but it's solely through the blood of Jesus that cleanses us. Yes, and, and we ask that you forgive us of our sins, our frailties, our shortcomings, our misgivings, Father God. And if you're so righteous and just to forgive us, Father God, we know that we have an obligation to forgive those who trespass against us. Yes, Father God, we call upon your name, Father God, today, Father God. Father God, we need your strength, Father God, to run this race that is before us, Father God. Mm -hmm. Father God, we know, Father God, that we are in some evil and wicked days, Father God. But Father God, we can take hope, Father God, through Christ Jesus, Father God. We are all more than conquerors, yes. Father God. And Father God, that uh, you are still sitting on the throne, Father God, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is still on your right hand making intercession for us, Father God. Father God, in these uh, pandemic times of social distancing, Father God, Father God, we thank you for spiritual intimacy, yes, Father sir. God. Yes, Father God, we know that you love us, Father God, and Father God, that you care for us, Father God, and we can cast our cares and burdens on you because you are a loving God. Yes, you are. Father God, we are so thankful, Father God, for Jesus Christ, Father God. And we ask, Father God, that throughout these times, Father God, that you help us keep fixated on the cross, yes. Father God. Father God, uh, we ask, Father God, uh, in these times of a biological virus, Father God, and the heart virus of hate, Father God, yes. we ask, Father God, that love, Father God, oh. transcend, Father oh. God. And that light, Father God, will move out darkness, Father God. Father God, we know that you're able, Father God. So we call upon you, Father God, knowing, Father God, that you are able to do all things, Father God. Father God, uh, we ask, Father God, we uh, are in a nation, Father God, that is in turmoil, Father God. Father God, we ask that you bind up the wounds of this nation, Father God. Help us, Father God, to keep true to our creed, Father God, that is on our currency, Father God. It is in you that we trust, Father God. Father God, uh, we just ask that you be with us, Father God, as a body of believers, Father God. Father God, strengthen our faith, Father God, during these times, Father God. Father God, be with those, Father God, who are downtrodden, Father God. 
whisper, Father God, so gently in their spirit, Father God, that you are still God and that you love us, Father God, and that you care for us, Father God. Amen. Father God, we ask that you be with uh, our church body, Father yeah. God, not only our church body, that Christians, Father God, believers throughout the world, Father God, knowing, Father God, that these are the times, Father God, that your glory is going to be manifested, Father God. Yes. Father God, we have a heart of compassion, Father God, of Christians, Father God. We know that we are called to be a light in a sin-sick world, Father God. So help us, Father God, to meet that responsibility, Father God, to help someone that is downtrodden, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you be with those, especially, Father God, who are mourning at this time, Father God, who are dealing with the ravages of this pandemic, Father God. We ask that you be with those, Father God, that are mourning uh, the loss of loved ones, Father God, at the hands of law enforcement, Father God. Father God, we know that you are a God of justice, Father God, a God of justice and a God of peace. So, Father God, we ask your intervention in that situation, Father God. Father God, we ask that you especially be with our church body, Father God, even though, Father God, we have not been able to meet, Father God, that we still are able to talk and communicate and pray to you on the prayer line, Father God. And we're so thankful for that. And that has encouraged us, Father yes, God, yes, during sir. these times, Father God. Yes. And we have lifted up the name of Jesus throughout. Father God, we ask that you be with uh, our minister, your manservant, Brother Middlebrook, Father God. Bless him, Father God, in a mighty way. Move in his spirit, Father God, that he is able to preach a word, Father God, a word that has the ability to save our souls, Father God. Yes. We're so thankful, Father God, for his guidance, his leadership, Father God, and the uh, leadership, the elders and deacons and their wives, Father God, that, that serve us here at the Metro Church of Christ, Father God. And we're so thankful for us as a church body, Father God. Uh, we're one body, Father God, many members, yeah. Father God, but all loving you and serving you, Father God. So we give thanks for that, Father thank God. You. Father God, uh, again, we just thank you, Father God. I ask that you uh, be with, uh, we have to be mindful, Father God, of our seniors, Father God, yeah. those that are in nursing homes, Father God, going through the, uh, the winter of their lives, Father God. We ask that you be with them, protect them, Father yeah. God. Not only protect them, Father God, be with those, Father God, who are on the front lines, Father God, who have a responsibility to care for them, Father God. Amen. Father God, we have to be mindful, Father God, of the least of us, Father yeah. God. Because, Father God, we're all, at one point in time, Father God, we are going to be among the least, yeah. Father God. So we just ask your blessings, Please. Father God, in that regard, Father God. Father God, just help us, Father God, to, again, keep our eyes on the prize, yeah. Father God, and to run this Christian race yes. that has been set before us with vigor and with vitality, yeah. Father God. Help us, Father God, to keep fixated on Christ Jesus, yeah. Father God, and keep in our hearts, Father God, that the, the commandment to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and strength. Yeah. And Father God, there's one other one, Father God, and that is to love our neighbor as ourselves, Father yeah. God. On those two, Father God, hang all the commandments. So help us, Father God. Again, we just thank you, Father God, for everything you do, Father God. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for Jesus Christ, Father God, who paid the price for us, Father God. And Father God, uh, we now submit this prayer, Father God, and just ask knowing that your peace is available, your grace is sufficient, and your power is divine. And we ask this in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name. And let us all say amen. Amen. Praise God. We're grateful and thankful to the great God of heaven who has blessed us to be here. We thank him for all that he has done. We thank him for all that he has not done. We thank him for what all we know he will and can do. We know that God is a keeper, and because he is a keeper, he has kept all of us and afforded us an opportunity to come once again and to worship him in spirit and in truth. We're so thankful this morning for the songs uh, that have been sang for the scripture reading that was read into our hearing out of the book of Philippians 4, uh, 4 through 7. And we're grateful and thankful to our brother and our friend who went to the throne of grace on our behalf and talked to God and allowed God to hear our concerns, our cares, and to just give him homage uh, to whom all is due. Uh, we're so thankful for each and every one of you, and we 
invite you that if you're watching to be a part of this service, hope, trust, and pray that God will bless your mind, your heart, and your spirit to realize and understand that there's no one greater uh, that we can serve than, than that is our great God of heaven and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are just thankful to be a part of the body of Christ. And although we're living in times where the world uh, is in an uproar by many things, the pandemic, uh, by racial oppression, uh, by uh, marches, and by protests, and all sorts of things taking place, we understand and know that God is still in control. And that God is able to change matters at any given time whenever he's ready to. And so we're just thankful to have a word and to have a faith and a confidence in a God who is able to do all things well. I want to talk to us this morning from the subject, hoping to encourage us, especially those that are Christians and those of you who are not, that you would become a child of God. Because uh, in the last and great days, and at the end of the day, as many would say, the only thing that's really going to matter is who do you really belong to? And it behooves us all to belong to Jesus Christ. In this great book of Philippians, we discover that the Apostle Paul, being the writer, the Apostle Paul is now in a Roman prison. Uh, he is not, does not have the privileges that he once had. This is a lot more stricter at this particular time. But he writes to the love church of his heart, a church that he established, we find, in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. We find Paul meeting a lady by the name of Lydia there. He baptized her and her household. Then we find also Paul uh, there with Silas as well. And he and his company, he was locked up in prison. And uh, around midnight, the great God of heaven allowed some miraculous things to transpire. That's just like the God we serve. Isn't it just like when it looks like everything is almost over, God steps in and makes things afresh and makes it brand new. We know, never know the depths or the reaches or the ways in which God will reach out to save one's soul. And so God, along midnight, opened up the prison doors. He shook the place. And the Philippian jailer, as we know him, came in, and he was scared to death and about to kill himself. Paul told him, do himself no harm. And he and his household was baptized that same night. And we find out in this particular book of Philippians that Paul writes to them while he's there in prison. He tells them, uh, all about uh, how he's concerned, he cares, he longs for them and how to conduct themselves in the mindset in which they are to have and what they're to be aware of. And he shares with them when he gets to chapter 4 as we begin to look at that particular uh, verses there, 4, 4 through 7. And I want to use the subject, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Uh, the word that Paul writes there as we reiterate these by reading them, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, when there's things going on that we feel that are overwhelming our hearts and our spirits, we can always think about the goodness of God and how good God has been and how well he has taken care of us even during these difficult times of this pandemic with COVID-19. We realize and understand that we still have something that we can rejoice in the Lord about. We can realize and understand and know that God is good. He has never moved from his place or his position, nor has his grace, nor his favor, or his mercy changed upon us. So we, as children of God, realize that we can rejoice in the Lord when it seems like there's nothing to be thankful for, nothing to be happy or excited about. We can be excited about the fact that our God is still holding this world in the palm of his almighty hand. Amen. Therefore, we rejoice According to verse number four, he said, and let your moderation be known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. We need to understand and know that we need to forbear and put up with one another. And this is how we, we do it in times like this. We need to know how to do it. And Paul lays out for the church here that this is how we do it. We find that there seemed to have been some differences between some sisters there in the church. But however, God is not a God of confusion he's not the author of confusion but he's of peace and love and joy and so Paul writes as he writes here he tells us in verses number six he lets us know be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving 
Let your request be made known unto God. And then he tells us in verse number uh, 7, he said, And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds. How? Through Christ Jesus. This word translated is where I want to land here this morning. It be careful means to be anxious. Don't be anxious for anything. It was Jesus himself, if you will allow me, who injected the principle and the practice in his uh, sermon on the mount. Uh, when we think about what Jesus said, remember he said in Matthew 6 and 25, be anxious, in other words, for nothing. In other words, he said, take no thought. Be not careful for uh, or, uh, or be careful of uh, anxious for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet your body, what you shall put on, is not like more than meat and the body than raiment. Jesus is the one who directs our attention to the birds and the grass as evidence that God providentially cares for his creatures according to Matthew 26 through 30. The Gentiles were preoccupied with material things, but those who know God as their father should be occupied with the affairs of his kingdom according to book of Matthew 6 and verse number 32. In other words, Jesus lays out something here as Paul does. He picks up his pen and follows what Jesus says. In other words, unto us, we are instructed to seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto us. We are not to worry about what we shall eat, drink, or put on because Jesus already has that taken care of. God, our great provider, has already given us everything. I need you to know that as we look at this particular lesson this morning, he says, in other words, take everything to him. We need to take all of our cares, all of our concerns, all of our worries, all of our fears. Take them to Jesus. He's the one that is able to deal with all of the things that we're concerned about. And this is how we do it. We do it by taking all of our cares and our concerns uh, under him. And everything, he says, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. In other words, our requests uh, are already known to God, uh, but he loves to hear from us anyway. God wants us as his children to ask of him what it is that we want. Uh, he knows, but yet he wants to hear from us. Uh, I don't know how prayer works but this one thing that I do know uh, I do know that God said come to him in faith and so whenever I'm praying or whenever you're praying make sure we're praying to God uh, with a spirit uh, and a mindset of faith trust and believe it and knowing that God is more than able to do uh, what we need uh, he's able to go beyond what we can ever think ask or imagine uh, when we look at this book called the Bible the Bible talks about and lets us know for me personally that my father is in heaven longs to, to hear from us. Uh, often uh, come to him uh, and linger and be there with him for a while. Uh, in other words, he don't want us to just come with a quick visit. He wants us to come and spend some time with him. Uh, there's nothing like coming to God and spending some time with God in prayer, talking to God and letting him know as the hymnologist said, uh, tell him all uh, about your problem. Uh, in other words, we can take our burdens uh, to the Lord and just leave them there. Nobody wants your burdens uh, but the Lord will take our burdens uh, and tell us just to leave them there uh, he desires he desires for us to talk to him uh, tell him all about our, our troubles and make our requests known unto him I don't know too many people as a matter of fact I don't know anybody else that wants to hear all about our troubles uh, and leave our troubles there but I'm glad uh, that God Apostle Peter put in his word that we can cast all our cares upon him because he cares uh, for you uh, I don't know nobody that will care for you like the Lord cares for you. Therefore, whatever we have going on in our world uh, or in our lives, uh, we need to cast all those cares before him who is able to do something about our undone situation. So I came by to tell you as a child of God, uh, we don't have to ask uh, a stranger for anything. Uh, we just take all of the things that we desire and all the things we need to the great God of heaven who is our heavenly father. Somebody ought to say amen. In other words, it's a dishonor to God for his children to beg someone else. Think about it. What do I look like being a father to my son and my children and they begging somebody else for something that they should be asking me for? Well, in the same sense, God doesn't want us 
begging somebody for something else when we can take it to God who will give us all things uh, and he'll give it to us and we don't have to worry about him going telling nobody else or anything of that nature. He wants us to have it. Too often when we make our request known unto man, they may answer your request, but here's what might happen. They may give it to you grudgingly. Or they may give it to you with an ulterior motive with, with some hooks on the end of it. But the God that we serve, uh, the God that I serve, and the God that I hope you will serve if you don't serve him now, he'll honor your request. That, that means he's paying attention to what you're saying. And when he pays attention because you're his child, he delivers unto you those things based upon faith and based upon his holy and divine will. We have to understand that Father knows best. But Paul writes here is what we're supposed to do is that we're to do everything by prayer. See, and what I love about God is that we can come to God about everything. I, I, I say everything. See, there's some stuff you can't go to your mama about. There's some stuff you can't go to your daddy about. There's some stuff you can't go to your wife about. There's some stuff you can't go to your husband about. There's some stuff you can't go to your best friend about. You can't go to your children about. But you can go to God about everything. And you can go to him not just because uh, he's available, but you can go to him knowing that he is interested in every detail of our lives. I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that, that I got a God that, that, that when I got a hair, uh, a hair in my eye, he's concerned about the details of my life. I'm glad to know that when I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, the Lord is concerned about me getting up at 2.30 in the morning if I can't sleep. As a matter of fact, he wants to hear from us so bad that the Hebrew writer put it in the word, in the word of God. He, he put it in there by the divine guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. He said, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feel of our infirmities. You need to take it to somebody who can understand what you're going through, who understands what it's like. He said, but it was in all points tempted like as we yet without sin. Now, and here's what I love about this particular 16th verse. He said, therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. When? In time of need. When do you come to God? Anytime I got a need, you may not think it's a need, but God knows that whenever I have a need, I can come to him boldly and get whatever it is that I need to help me keep on fighting the good fight of faith. God, what he's done, has opened up wide the gates of his presence and given us access to it. He says, come boldly. That, that means that God has opened up and has given us access to the throne of grace to come at any time about any situation, about any matter, any care, any concern. And I came by to tell you, church, we need to continue to go and to continue going to God about the issues that are going on in the world where we live. Because the only answer is not in man, but the answer is in God. And when the saints of God do what the Bible tells us to do, we pray about everything and don't worry about anything. Let God have his way. We find out that this is how we do it and this is how the world needs to learn how to do it by watching us as an example in other words what God tells us he's saying come tell me all about it I said I like some mother's words right there just, just, just come and, and just sit down baby just tell me all about it. as a matter of fact it sounds like some big mama words C come on baby just tell me God is telling us to come and just tell him all about it in other words just a little talk just a little talk with Jesus will make some things all right. It, 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 it'll make some things all right. When, when, when we do what God says do, when we learn how to rejoice in the Lord and always remember that all of us as children of God have something to rejoice about. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. Our citizenship is actually in heaven according to Philippians 3 and 20. Paul was letting them know that this world is not the place for us. We're just pilgrims in a foreign land on our way home to Jesus. He says, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say always rejoice. And then he says, let. Let your moderation uh, be known unto who? He says, all oh, men. Let them know what? That the Lord is at hand. I'm acting based upon the fact that God is my God and the Lord is forever presence with me. But then what God does when we do this is that he gives us peace. 
And what the world needs now, what many of us need, is peace. Yeah, we, we, need, we don't need an outer peace. We need an inner peace. We need the peace that only God can give. Watch what he says in verse 7. I'm going to read that verse again. He said, and the peace of God, not the peace of the world, not the peace of our government, not the peace of man, but the peace of God. He says, and the peace of God. What does the peace of God do? The peace of God, what it does here, it passes all understanding. In other words, man can't comprehend the peace that God gives. But man is able to receive the peace that God gives if he will accept God's son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior. You'll never have the peace that God intended for you to have until you get peace with God. And the only way that you can have peace with God is by having peace with his son and obeying him and accepting him as Lord and Savior, being buried with him in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of your sin. And the Lord asks you to the church and now you have peace with God and you can have complete peace with man. Because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. Amen, somebody. Amen. Watch what he says here. He lets us know that God gives us peace. It is the peace of God which passes all understanding. And what it does, it shall keeps our, keep our hearts and our minds through Jesus Christ. Now, if we took that through Jesus Christ out, we would, we would not understand the necessity and the important role that Jesus plays in this. But I need to know, does anyone in here know about the peace of God that God gives? Is there anybody that can testify to the fact that in the midst of all of the turmoil, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the protest, in the midst of the world being in an uproar, I still have peace because my peace is not based on what I can see or who I can see. My peace is based on my faith in Christ Jesus. And when you have, if you will, when you have peace with God, what is it in the world? What is it anywhere that can disturb the peace that God gives unto you? There's nothing that can disturb the peace that God gives you because what God gives you is not natural. It's supernatural. It's of a divine nature. I came by to tell you nothing can disturb the peace of God. I need to ask the question, can something happening uh, in a remote part of the galaxy disturb God's peace? Absolutely not. Why? Because God is the ruler and the reigner of all things. Uh, can a COVID-19 disturb the peace of God? I came by to tell you, no sir and no ma'am. Uh, God gave me peace that prevails over that too. Uh, can a, 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 he, God is an omnipresent God. He's always on the spot. Uh, I need you to know that whatever something is going on, God is already there. He knew about COVID-19 before COVID-19 ever even got here. So he gave us what we needed was a peace that passes all understanding while the world is worried and falling apart scared to death and all that good stuff we're at peace with God because we know this world is not our home we're just passing through so we have the peace because we have the presence of God Almighty and the power of his presence is because God is omnipresent he's always on the spot so can social justice disturb the peace of God no sir and no man. It may frustrate man. It may cause man to be miserable and cause man to be lost but it cannot disturb the peace of God. I came by to tell you God has given us something that the world can't understand. I need to ask can violent protesting disturb the peace of God? No sir and no man. When you have peace you have peace. All hell can be breaking loose all around you. But inside of you, you have the peace of God and that don't disturb you either. I, I need you to understand, can, can economic stresses disturb the peace of God? The Bible already told us that, you know what, we need to seek first the kingdom of God and all this right and all these things shall be added unto us. It doesn't matter what the world does. God is our Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. He's our shalom of the Old Testament. He's the one that gives us that, 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 that passes all understanding. I need us to understand that the psalmist says unto us in Psalm 24 that we don't get worried about what goes on in the world whether it's economic or whatever the psalmist penned he said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof 
and they that dwell therein. It gives me good peace to know that I belong to a God uh, who is almighty. Uh, I belong to a God who is from everlasting uh, to everlasting. In other words, nothing can take the place behind God's back because he's right there at all times. He's aware of my every moment, my every situation, my every circumstance. He's always there. And can't nobody do me like Jesus. And, and some people want to try to run from the Lord. But I got some good news for you. You can't hide. You can't run. You can't get away. Because in Psalms 139, 7, if you read the rest of it through 12, I'm just going to quote the first verse. The psalmist says, where can I go from thy spirit? Or where shall I flee from thy presence? In other words, you can't get away from God. So the best thing for anyone to do who's not a child of God is come on and accept God as Lord and Savior because he'll give you something that the world can't give you. You can't buy it. You can't buy it. You can't purchase it nowhere. It's already been paid for and it's been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the Lord knows where you are and he knows where we are at all times. Somebody say, how do you know that preacher? What kind of God do you serve? I serve an almighty God. I serve a God who lets me know in the book of Proverbs 15 and 3 that the eyes of the Lord are in every place. It's beholding the good and the evil. Can some diabolical thought of Satan uh, disturb the peace of God? I came by to tell you, absolutely not. Uh, can some mystery, obscure uh, idea, crafty twist of error or some plot hatched uh, in the demented soul uh, of Lucifer to thwart God's beneficial uh, purpose of bring new forms uh, of suffering into the universe to disturb God's peace. Uh, the answer is absolutely not. Uh, God is, uh, I came by to tell you, he's omniscient. Uh, in other words, he knows uh, all the wiles uh, of the evil one uh, and his fallible wisdom. He has anticipated and annulled every one of them that Satan may conjure up. Uh, I need to tell you, li listen church, uh, uh, Satan's deep uh, counsels can't even compare to God's uh, no matter how clever or sophisticated they may seem unto man uh, they can't compare to the wisdom of God uh, can the gates uh, of hell uh, even prevail uh, against God almighty I came by to tell you they can't even disturb uh, the Lord's church uh, Jesus said uh, in Matthew 16 and 18 uh, I will build my church uh, and the gates of hell shall not uh, prevail against it uh, I'm here to tell you God God is omnipotent. Uh, he commands galaxies uh, and creates atoms. Uh, the almighty God of heaven uh, tossed stars uh, into space. Uh, he holds satellites whirling uh, at inconceivable velocities uh, on their orbits. I uh, came by to tell you that you uh, need to understand uh, and you need to know uh, that I'm here to tell you that there's no physical, moral, spiritual power that does not rule uh, with consummate skill, uh, tireless ease, uh, both in heaven uh, or earth or in in hell. Uh, there's nothing that can ruffle the peace of God. And I came to tell you, you need this peace that God has offered unto you because God is the only place, the only person where you can find it is in his son, Jesus Christ. It's a calm, if you will. God's peace will give you a calmness when everything is falling apart uh, in your world. It's a calm beyond all storms. It's a rest beyond all stripes. It's a haven beyond all temptations. seas. The peace of God is majestic and is sublime. Amen. Notice what he says. He says, my next point is that let the peace of God rule. Let the peace of God rule. In other words, we need to understand that 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 it's an, an unfathomable peace of God who controls the universe and it pursues the faultless purpose. It's the same peace that Paul is commending to the church here at Philippi. Let me drive this home. Their, their arguing should vanish in the infinite calm of God's peace. Whenever God is present, peace is present because God is peace. This is the divine peace that kept Paul's mind and his heart while he was locked up in that Roman jail. The word translated keep in Philippians 4 and verse number 7, when we began to look at it, is for real, which is translated kept with a garrison. We find that same word found in 2 Corinthians 11 and verse number 32. For real means to be kept in custody. 
How many of us are kept in the custody of God's holy and divine word and his spirit today? God keeps his people in custody. In other words, between Paul and threatening circumstances stood a garrison. It can only come so far, but it couldn't get to Paul. Satan can only get so close to you, but he can't do you any harm because God gives you something inside of you. He insulates you and helps you understand that because you've been insulated, you've also been isolated. You've been isolated from the destruction of Satan because God won't allow him to destroy what he has because you're maybe going through physical ailments. You may be experiencing financial ailments, but inwardly you are experiencing a joy and a peace that passes all understanding. See, a river of peace was thrown around the citadel of Paul's soul. In other words, God surrounded him with peace in his soul. In the depths of his being, God's peace was, was an antidote. And Paul offered, uh, offered for uh, disturbing thoughts and, and, and emotions. Uh, see, in other words, when you're going through some stuff or you find yourself slipping off the edge, you need to start talking to God. And remember what you have to rejoice about. I, I, I don't need to worry. I need to be rejoicing. Thank God for God. Learn how to thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for his church. Thank God for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank God for being my salvation. Thank God for being my deliverer. Thank God for being my everything. All that I need at all times, everywhere, and at any place. Learn how to thank God. That'll give us something to rejoice about. And when we start rejoicing in the Lord, we'll know and we'll understand that God can do everything but fail. See, Paul, if you will, uh, he was writing about, not about a theory or a theological proposition removed from daily reality. But Paul was writing to the church about this. And he was writing to them about what he had experienced. See, he was operating on the principle of, of the dynamic Christian life. Our Christian life has been given unto us by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God has given us, through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And so we have a Christian life and we operate on those principles and those practices that no matter what comes and no matter what goes, we're still able to find peace. In this text, Paul shows us he's locked up. He's a living testimony that the principle worked. It's one thing to hear about something. It's another thing to experience something. See, you don't know it because somebody tells you about it. It's different when you know it because you know it for yourself. And when you know it for yourself, you can stand flat-footed, bold-faced, and big mouth and tell a sin-sick world, I have a peace that passes all understanding because my God has garrisoned me in. He's keeping me and he's holding me in the grip of his amazing grace. Paul was a living testimony that the principal work there. It was his calmness of soul while he was in the Philippian jail and in Caesar's cell that gave him the opportunity and the privilege to testify to the fact that God is all that we need. How can we hope to be garrisoned by God's peace? The Bible points out to us clearly as I hasten to a close. The only way we can be garrisoned by God's peace or be covered with God's peace or, or filled with the peace of God is only through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus says some, some powerful words in John 14 and 6. He says, I am I am the what I am number one I am the way I am the truth and I am the life no man comes unto the father but by me See, the only way we can get this peace is through Jesus Christ yes I'm telling you you need Jesus Christ yes I'm telling you, you need to turn your life over to him in other words we are kept not through our strength or our will or through our sublim sublimation of thought or through the resolution of our heart. But only through Jesus Christ. Don't ever forget that church. We're only kept in this manner through Jesus Christ. 
Paul put this principle into practice as a prisoner in the midst of others that were there. We find in the book of Luke chapter 2 and 14, the heavenly host said, glory to God, the highest on earth, peace, goodwill toward all men. Finally, we need to understand and know we need to be filled with joy. We need to be filled with forbearance. We need to continue in prayer, giving God thanks for everything and allowing the peace of God that passes all understanding to fill our hearts and our minds. That imperturbable peace hushed the storm-tossed sea of Galilee and gave rest to the tormented souls of the Garden of Garden of Demonic Spirits. The peace remained unshaken by conflict, criticism, crisis, and crosses. I came by to tell you that the peace of God at all times, in all places, under all circumstances, Christ responded in his Father's good and acceptable and perfect will. I'm here to tell you that when Jesus appeared in the upper room on the resurrection evening, his greetings to his disciples was peace. According to John 20 and 19, Jesus Christ was and is uh, the secret of Paul's uh, own peace uh, and Paul's own soul. Uh, Jesus Christ can be the secret uh, to your own soul uh, because of his peace. Uh, if you'll accept him uh, as Lord uh, and Savior, it's God's peace uh, was established uh, in him by the indwelling uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul experienced the peace of God uh, because Christ lived uh, in his life uh, daily. We need to have Christ living in our lives uh, daily so that we can experience uh, what God uh, intended for us to experience uh, Jesus desires uh, if you will to live uh, with all uh, who will believe on him and obey his will uh, Satan if you will would like to take our minds and our hearts by storm uh, but God uh, thanks be to God uh, glory be to God uh, I said Satan would like to take our minds and our hearts uh, by storm uh, but God uh, offers his grace uh, as a garrison he offers his peace uh, as a garrison to stand uh, guard against all of Satan's attacks. Uh, therefore, I came by to tell you as I close uh, that Jesus Christ uh, is the one that you need uh, in your life uh, in turbulent times. Uh, he's the only one uh, that can calm the storms uh, of your spirit, your mind, uh, and your emotions. Uh, when the world has fallen apart, uh, you can look to heaven and know that this world uh, is not my home. Uh, I'm just uh, passing through uh, one of these old days. Uh, I'm going to mount up wings uh, like an eagle uh, and sing the whole song uh, some glad morning uh, when this life is over I'm going to fly away uh, what are you doing brother preacher I'm just waiting uh, on the Lord uh, to come back and uh, retrieve his church uh, I'm glad I'm in it uh, you can be a part of it but you got to accept and understand uh, that Jesus Christ uh, is the only way uh, you can't have peace uh, you can't rejoice uh, like God would have to rejoice uh, without Jesus Christ uh, and the spirit of God dwelling in you so I came by to tell you what Jesus did in order for you to have this peace. I came to let you know that this is how we do it. We do it not according to our own will, not according to our own way, but we do it according to the dictates and the mandates of God, Son, Jesus Christ, and his word. We do it in this manner by accepting him as Lord and Savior. And not only am I telling you this is how we do it, this is how you ought to do it. This is how God desires for you to do it. He desired for you to do this and to enjoy this so much that he was willing to die for you. He was willing to die because you were doomed and destined to hell. As we all are, as all humanity, because we've separated ourselves from God through sin. But God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. He only had one. How many of us would just give up one? How many of us would give up our, our last dollar? We want our last dollar. How many of us would give up our last dime? How many of us would give up our last car? How many of us would give up our last meal? How many of us would give up our last one and only son to die for an ungrateful people who does not deserve what they're receiving? But Jesus Christ, by the will of God, came down to this sin-sick world, died out on Calvary's cross, allowed himself to be crucified by men that he created, on wood that he created, on nails that he created. He allowed himself to hang there on a cross between the twilights of two worlds and two thieves. 
He allowed them to spit in his face. He allowed them prior to that to beat him all night long, to drag him from judgment hall to judgment hall. He allowed them to strip him of his clothes. He allowed them to stretch him high, hang him high, and stretch him wide. He allowed them to pierce him in his side, but they didn't know what they were doing when they did that. When they pierced him in his side, the Bible says that out of his side came blood and water. And when they crucified my Lord, they thought that was it. They thought that was the end. But I came by to tell you, you can't judge a matter based upon what you see. That's why we as children of God, we walk by faith and not by sight. They thought they had destroyed and killed the Son of God. But God had made other plans. I came by to tell you, they put him in a borrowed tomb. They put him in a borrowed tomb. Why would he need a borrowed tomb? I'm just going to borrow it because I don't have any intentions to stand here. I told you I was going to tear this temple down. And in three days, I'll build it back up. He stayed there the first day. Stayed there the second day. But early one Sunday morning, which was the first day of the week, Jesus got up with all power. And since he's been up with all power, he went in and saw his disciples. Uh, and he let them know what had been done. Uh, and after he did that, he caught a cloud and rode on back to glory. And now he's seated on the right hand of the Father. And he's waiting on you to accept him as Lord and Savior. That's gospel. What will you do with the gospel? Because this is how we do it. This is how God wants you to do it. This is how you should do it. If you want to be able to rejoice in the Lord, and again I say rejoice. If you want to let your moderation be known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. If you want to, you know, just not worry about anything but pray about everything and know that your prayers are being heard. If you want to have the peace of God that passes all understanding, God gives you through the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Philippi an answer to your need. An answer to the problems that we have in this world. God has the answer written in the book. And the answer is Jesus Christ. So if you're here or you're listening, how do I come to Jesus? You come to Jesus by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to hear the gospel in order to believe the gospel. Once you believe that gospel that was preached unto you, you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He died for your sins. He was buried and he rose early the third day. You have to have that faith because without faith, it's impossible to please him. According to Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You have to turn from your way of thinking to the way of thinking of God. We see in our world that man's way of thinking is not proficient. It's not sufficient. It's not even able to take us where we're trying to go. Therefore, we need to repent and turn to God. There's power in Christ. The same power that God Jesus up is the same power that God gives unto us when we accept him as Lord and Savior. Then you need to confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. It's not enough just to say it. You got to say it and you got to mean it and believe it with all your heart. The Bible tells us in Matthew 10, 32 and 33, he that confessed me before men, him also will I confess before my father, which is in heaven. I don't know about you. I'm not concerned about being pleased by uh, 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 praised by man. I want the Lord to profess me and confess me before his father that this is one of ours. He belongs to you. He covers with the blood of Jesus Christ. He's my brother I, that's who i want to to confess me i want jesus confess me before the father i ain't worried about man confessing me down here don't need any of his accolades all i need is jesus and all you need is jesus but you need to realize how we do it then you need to be buried with him in the watery grave of baptism for the remission of sin you go down in the water and you wash away your sins and the bible lets us know mark 16 16 he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved there's no question about your salvation there's no if there's no maybe you are saved sanctified set apart and satisfied filled with the holy ghost and you're able to enjoy the rejoicing in the lord you're able to let your remoderation be known unto all men you're able to not worry about anything but pray about everything and then you're able to have the peace of god it passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Ain't that good news? That's good news right there. That's good news. And if you're here this morning and you want to be saved, you can come. 
If you're here and you're falling short and you say, I need to ask God to forgive me. I've messed up. I've gotten weary. I've gotten caught up in the world. I've done this. I've done whatever it is. If you confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, according to 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. And if you're here and you just need prayer, you need to understand that the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous, those the righteous are the children of God. They availeth much. In other words, it is, it's, it's, there's value. It's worth something when we send our prayers up to heaven. That's why Paul said that we pray about everything, but we don't worry about anything. And James tells us that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. If you're here, stand while we sing a song of encouragement and do what it is that you need to do. God will bless your life. God will take care of you. He'll give you what you need. You need to come. Come. God bless you. Come on. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. God bless you. Appreciate your love. mother to win. You are the fire, man fully on, word dark, passion subdued. Just look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. So why don't you ask the Savior to help you? Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you, and he will carry you through. We now come to the part of the service for the offering. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, and it reads, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly, shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us throughout this day and throughout the world. Heavenly Father, we give the opportunity now to give back for what you've granted us with, and Heavenly Father, we know that you've blessed us so bountifully that we'll never be able to repay you, but we want to take the opportunity to say thank you for what you've done. We love you, and we give you all the praise and glory. These prayers we ask in your name. Amen. Holy Spirit, dwell in me. Touch my eyes that I might see. All your goodness, grace, and power Stay beside me every hour Be my drink, be my living bread Keep me sheltered, keep me fed Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit Dwell in me Now come to the part of the service where we take communion. In chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, verses 23 through 30, and it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not deserving the Lord's body. For well, this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread, which is the broken body, and this cup, which is the shed blood. Lord, we ask that we all take this in an acceptable manner before thee. These prayers we ask in your name. Amen. That concludes this portion of the
the service. Let us pray. Father God, we are so thankful for just bringing us here once again to hear another portion of that holy and divine word. Father, we just, we just pray that we may use it in our everyday life. And Father, as we depart from this building, Father, please don't depart from our sight. This is our prayer. We ask in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. And how the ransom singers will together lift that hymn. Oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. We're singing, oh, what.